should everybody should have gotten the recording in progress. All right. right. This is going to be on how to put thread on your bobbin and a few uh, tips on getting your pattern ready. And we're going to start out. First off, you need to know how to make a slip knot. Now, I want to see if I can spotlight. Whoops, wrong one. Cancel. I want to spotlight this one. There, there we go. Now, this is huge thread. This is yarn, okay? But it's easier to see, and I can't really tell you how to do a slip knot, but I do know that in the past it has stopped someone from making bobbin lace with me because I didn't know how to, to I could just show them and that was uh, not acceptable. Anyway, so I'm going to try again. Um, first off, the end of the uh, thread is going over my finger. I'm going to twist, okay, twisting and catching where they meet right there with my other thumb and finger. Then I'm kind of hooking under and around. And that's how you've got a, a slip knot. And a slip knot is just one that when you pull it one direction, the loop gets bigger and you pull it the other direction. If I can the loop gets smaller. The, sh the tail end is the one that um, is not going to, the knot's not going to move on this part of the thread. It's only going to move on the part that's here. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go over, twist. It's hard to see twist. And then kind of hook finger over and pull it together and then that knot loop would fit onto your bobbin okay so i got that out of the way <laughs> i'm sorry that's the one i always worried about because it's like i do it so fast that's as slow as i've ever done it because i'm just used to doing, oh you can also pull it completely out i just did that there's now no knot at all on this yarn. Um, the pattern that I sent to y'all has been sized to work well with the DMC number 60, the Cordonet special. It only comes in like white and off white. So got that and the reason you want it to be sized for your thread is that if it's too sorry try to get this down closer if the this is the same size pattern it's actually exactly same pattern same uh, type of thread this is both linen thread but this one is obviously much thinner thread and this is much thicker thread. So you have to decide what you want. And actually the one you need is the size you need is right in the middle of these two. I need to make one of those up too. So I've tried to size our, our pattern to fit with the thread that we have. So, um, how, how do you size? How do you know? With the, um, let me remove that with a uh i just increase or decrease with the xeroxer with the copy machine and then try again um so is I, it like laying your thread on the pattern and you're trying to make it the same width as the thread i mean what's your measurement to know to increase oh i i actually um on our pattern I cut one apart. I don't. It's, I have several of these floating around. Cut one apart, wound uh, two pair. So I have four bobbins, and I just 
did the lace from the first point down to the next point. And if it looked about the, the right size, so it's just a little bit over the width of the uh, lines that are here on this particular one. Okay. That's a great question. Did that make sense, what I said? Yeah, I think the thread I have is just about exactly the same width as the picture. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was, yours is, this, when I looked at it, I thought that's gonna be a little bit big. The thread. Yes. Be big for this pattern. For this size pattern, but if you want to enlarge your pattern, through your copy machine, mm -hmm. I would try, try mm, um, twice as big maybe to start out with. Take four of your bobbins that you've wound together, two pair, and just try it. See how it, it fills in that, that pattern if you want to use the threads you already have. Okay. Which is what I think they did in period. I think they used whatever thread they had and changed the bobbin. Oh shoot, forgot to bring the gingham. This bobbin, this pattern probably was not printed. They used a gingham type weave where it had the, the you know, gingham, the squares on it. And they That's just cool. worked, you know, you can see where the square would be. You know, you would either, do the uh, gingham sideways so that, that the square fit in here. Or hold on, get, get it closer so you can see what I'm, what I'm pointing at. You'd either do a, a, a sideways gingham, set it sideways so it wasn't running straight and, you know, it was running all the way this box is, is laying. And then you just did from corner to corner, and this one goes down the center. So you wouldn't have to have a pattern for this, particularly for this one. So if you have some gingham laying around, you might want to try it with that. <laughs> the parts of the bobbin, you've got, uh, oops, find where my camera is. You got your head, uh, I think it's called the shank. It's where the thread goes and then the handle. So we're going to do our um, slip knot, which I'm going to try to do very slowly again. And you're going to want to put that one on. Now, some people are able to wind a bobbin without the slip knot. And I'm sure if I tried and practiced, I could too. I don't like to, though. But you're going to start with your slip knot, hold the tail, that part that's not going to move if you pull the thread in your. I'm doing it a right handed loading. Okay, you're going to turn the bobbin away from you because I'm holding the bobbin in my right hand. And I'm going to turn the bobbin away from me and holding the tail and turning and trying to get to where it catches. And then I push it down. I don't know why I have this thing that I need it to be nice and even on that front first row I do, but I do. I'm winding it away from me. Sorry, I'm kind of catty cornered. Push it down. And once you get it where you can turn the bobbin, you can cut that tail off and be out of the way. My camera got joss jostled up, so I'm waiting for it. There we go. And that way that's just out of the way. And you just spin and wind. It's important that you do 
the turning the bobbin turning away from you because as spinners know you take your your flax which looks like pulled out cotton balls and you spin it a certain way it's very important that all of that fiber that you're spinning for that one project be spun the same direction i don't know much more about spinning but that so I'm just gonna kind of go with that one and then you ply it by putting two or three sets of your spun fiber together and then that sets yet another direction for all the fibers to go once you load your bobbin you're putting yet another direction we don't want to put another direction so we're trying to go with this the fiber so we're going to do away with this um, i'm i don't use cotton a lot which is what this particular thread is and it's what i told you to get because it's cheap and easily found at um, hobby lobby and michaels and some walmarts not mine because i live out in gilmer texas you need to say it like this gilmer okay it's not it's not civilized it's gilmer so um i just wanted something you could get easily and as cheap as possible so you can find out that you just absolutely love making lace once i get to a full hank i just keep going and bring it back down A lot of modern patterns will tell you how many yards or how many inches to put on your bobbins. I have never worried about that because if I run out of thread on my bobbin, I can put another bobbin on and it's not hard. I will show you, it'll be easy. You will never worry about how much thread to put on your bobbin. Also, if I have extra thread on bobbins, I use a little clip, like a hair, little hair clip. Let's see if I can get it off this one real quick. Of course not, it's underneath that one. And I just keep it for another project. So that's just a little clip we've got. So you're going to load all of your thread that you're going to want to use for the, for the project, for two bobbins onto one first so i go up and down a couple of times after that first um load that first row i i, I want it to be nice and even the rest of them are like whatever because you can't move it around once it's there when you're working with cotton it doesn't really matter what you're uh pulling the thread from I have a, a a really cool little container that I will send a link. It's Lizbeth thread holder, and uh, it's for tatters. These two little holes you can put a, a loop and put it on your wrist, and while you're tatting, it's it's just hanging off your wrist. It's really cool. Linen thread, you have to. It has to become it has to come off of the skein and onto your bobbin in the same direction. Okay. Cotton, I've, I like I said, I haven't used it much, but it's not as as finicky. Okay, once you get as many or as much thread as you want on your first bobbin, you're going to do the magic knot because it, it, it is magic, and I think it's called a hank it's a double hank or a triple hank um i know i call it the magic knot and what you're going to do let's see get me back under my camera there we go. Yes. Could, you, could you put where you're working as the main window rather than oh yes you we love looking at you but <laughs> come on i want to do that spotlight all right thank you i took it off for I don't know why, but I needed to put it back on. So come on, focus, guys. You can focus here. 
don't know if that's going to help again i got a new new phone so so it's going to go around twice and then you're going to want to put the head of the bobbin sorry underneath Oh, okay, I'm gonna try again. Sorry, it's hard to do it slow. It's hard for me to do it slow. So you've got the two, there we go, the two threads, and you want the head of the bobbin to go underneath those two threads. Okay. The head of the bobbin and the top of the fingertip are pointing the same direction. You're going to carefully pull your oops see it's not under both of them it's got to be under both of them there we go and i wish it would focus i'm sorry it's not you take your finger out and pull that and that's the knot and what's magic about it you can pull on it when it's going straight down from the thread source and it's not going to move when you get it to a 90 degree angle and you turn your bobbin all of a sudden you have longer thread it's magic you can also take thread up without having to take the knot off by pulling that and then twisting it's hard to do with not having enough hands twisting or turning the bobbin until it takes it all up so it's truly a magic knot i love it so once you have the amount of, of bobbin thread i'm sorry amount of thread on your bobbin that you want for both bobbins you put the magic knot on it. You're going to cut the thread off from the source. You're going to get another bobbin and wind a half of the thread onto this bobbin. Okay, started with the slip knot again. And then the bobbin that has the thread on it can just hang down in front of you and again you roll away from you that's what helps you with that magic knot roll away from you i don't know why so it's in order, go ahead in order to run this pattern at a minimum we should have how many up and down on each bob. Okay. Great question. Great segue. I appreciate that. The checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> on our pattern, now we only need to look at one pattern, one because I just put two of them in there in case you wanted to uh, have a continual. A uh, piece of lace because this is great to go around a uh, coif and I uh, uh, can't even think what else. Uh, I've done it Cuff. with uh, yes, some cuffs, maybe cuffs um, uh, uh, on the degliche, the the right right on the chemise part in white linen. I have put a little. Um, bead at the end hello there it is at the end of every point to dress it up a little bit uh, i've done this in black silk it's very pretty in, in black silk uh, but before we get too far with that one i want to show you what to do if you're not going to let the uh, or put this on your pillow to let it hang and be um, let ha gravity help you keep your, your pillow bobbins tight. 
So if if it's hanging just with a little bit of gravity and it's hanging on the pillow, that knot is going to stay snug. If it, you're going to put your bobbins in a bag and transport them that way, you're going to want to bring the, the uh, thread down from the knot and then get something. I've got little uh, hair clips. <laughs> got them at the dollar store. I don't know how long ago. Uh, other people have used uh, drinking straws that they've cut to the length of the shank and cut a uh, slit down the length of it and then just slipped it over. But this way you can then take these bobbins and you can leave them in a Ziploc bag as long as you want. Trust me, I have some you know, a Ziploc bag from a previous project that had a whole bunch of thread left on it. So I'll, I'll pull it off and use it for another one. But we're back to how many of these you're going to have to wind. Okay. At the top of this pattern, it tells you this is lucky. In there are two period pattern books that um, with some research and some determination you can either decide or and some of them are labeled this takes you know eight pairs or this one takes 16 pairs um, this one takes eight pair and you're going to put four pair right there and four pair right there if the numbers weren't there you could figure it out you need two pair for each one of these pathways so you've got two pair going this way and two pair going that way. So you've got your four and four, I mean your four, and then the two pair here and two pair there. So that's uh, eight pair, two bottom. So it's my math just left. I'm gonna blame blame it on the stroke. If anything goes wrong with my my thinking, that's what I blame it on. Even though it would have happened before as well. So I don't care. <laughs> Um, so that's 16 bobbins, eight pair would be 16 bobbins. I thought it was 24 for some reason. Nope. Okay. No, it's, 16, it's, so it's 16. It's 16. Three times eight would be 24. I don't know what pattern that you would need 24. It'll be, it'll be the pattern coming up. A pattern in the future. So, uh, to answer the question, thank you. <laughs> While we're looking at the pattern, when you go to put your your bobbins on to on your pillow, if you're wanting to do a length of this, like again, this is you know. A period pattern it's good for something if you get to it and you you're you, you want to do it later you've got it set up but you're going to want to cut where let me get back to my other scissors my non-paper scissors there's a dot and my camera is just not focusing as well as i would like it to or maybe it's just not printed as well as i'd like it to be printed but there's a dot. Every dot that you see on here is where you're you're going to place a pin. I like to cut the ends of the patterns off right at the dot. So you've got half a dot here, and then that means there's going to be a half a dot down here on the other piece that will connect with the top of this one. Same thing, this one to this one. So you're cutting so that the dot is cut in half. Now, if you're really good, you would measure out from the uh, foot line, which is the straight line, where you're going to sew it to a fab piece of fabric or something and make it nice and the same amount from both sides. Sorry, my fingers on. So, you know, 
cut out the same amount here and same amount here. It's going to make it easier to get it a straight piece of lace. I have some lace that it's straight until you get to the pattern and then it kind of goes a little bit that way. So it worked. It went around a, 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 a one of the one of the um, odd shaped coif one. So it worked. It was great. When you start your hanging your bobbins, where am I? I forgot I have a pillow underneath there with bobbin lace on it already. So let me move this up just a little bit so I'm not poking into my. Mm. If you are using that reminds me because this is really hard going through lots of, of layers so I would have to um, prick this if it was a real thin or real thick um, pattern bobbin lace pattern material that it's uh, a um, I can't think of what to, anyway the thin pattern the the cardstock that goes through your printer you're not going to have to pre-prick which just means you're not going to have to put the holes in where the pins go you can if you want to but you don't have to um i don't when it's this thin i don't i just Put it on the lace pillow and go on with it. When you are loading your pillow, it says you want four pair on this on each pin. There are two ways to, to put pairs. You need to put them side by side or what you call a rainbow. We want to do the side by side. So that's one. This is the second one. Try to keep them evenish. There's the third. And this one it would be the fourth. Okay. So these four bobbins will work the angled part of the pattern and these four bobbins would work the straight on the down here down this way obviously I don't have enough on this bobbin I need to wind some more onto it but I wanted to get to questions are there any other questions while we're here I don't know if I'm at the point for questions because my thread is all tangled. So I haven't even finished winding my first bobbin. Yeah, it's hard to do it with uh, embroidery uh, style skeins. Yeah. So, and since you're going to do so many, you might want to consider getting a, a skein of the. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be good. Yeah. I can't ever remember how to say cordon, cord, cordonette. Special, the 60 DMC size. 60. Yeah, DMC 60. Okay. Yeah, I may do that. 
and we'll have another well this same class on Tuesday at seven. And I'll get this video up on uh, my YouTube channel so that um, it's there to help. I hope it's helpful at least. I was doing fine until I dropped my bobbins on the floor. Oh no. <laughs> I'm all tangled up with cat fur and what else. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that it is easier to make lace without a cat knocking the bobbins around. Well, he's he's been good. He's asleep over here, but Aww. I have five cats, so there's plenty of fur around. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot of cats. Yeah, it's, tell it's... me about it. dynamics are interesting as in you know like the chinese curse interesting <laughs> okay i'm going to stop the recording just because it'll be easier to get it up on all the loading stuff and but we don't have to stop the uh session